Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Clement Tan from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Today, it is my great honor and pleasure indeed to be able to join the Pandemi Virtual Scientific Meeting. First, let me thank Dr. Julia Baliana for inviting me. And I'm also very grateful to all of you for allowing me to join your very esteemed meeting this afternoon. In the next 10 minutes or so, I'll be talking about cataract surgery in angle closure glaucoma. These are my financial disclosures and also the funding that has supported our work in primary angle closure glaucoma. Now, let us first start with this with two treatment algorithms for primary angle closure glaucoma. In the first slide here, you'll see a hypothetical situation in which 360 degrees of the angle is appositionally closed. Under such circumstances, if we can do certain procedures to reopen the drainage angle, then chances are that the trabecular meshwork can drain fluid once again, can drain aqueous once again, and the pressure may come down. So the algorithm for this hypothetical extreme situation of 360 degrees at positional angle closure would be, first of all, you have to ask yourself whether there is visually significant cataract. If there is cataract, then you perform cataract extraction alone. If there is still a positional angle closure after performing cataract extraction, then you may have to confirm whether there is plateau iris configuration. And if this is the case, then argon laser peripheral endoplasty may be a very effective treatment. On the other hand, if there is no visually significant cataract, then you may perhaps consider laser peripheral iridotomy as a first step. After that, if there is still persistent appositional angle closure with ocular hypertension, then you have, will have to decide whether it is plateau iris configuration or the lens that is contributing mainly to the angle closure. If it is the former, then you go down the route of argon laser peripheral iridoplasty, whereas if it is the lens, then you consider lens extraction. But of course, in a lot of cases, both mechanisms may be contributing, and then you would have to decide which is more important. But under more, more often than not, personally, I would find lens extraction to be the more effective treatment. Now, this is another slide looking very similar, but this time the hypothetical situation is of the other end of the spectrum. This time we are assuming there is 360 degrees complete synechial angle closure with ocular hypertension with or without glaucomatous optic neuropathy. Now, once again, under this situation, because the angle is completely synechially closed, even if you do something such as cataract extraction to deepen the anterior chamber and widen the drainage angle, the trapecular meshwork may still not be accessible to the aqueous for drainage. And so very often, you may have to consider additional IOP lowering procedures. Now, so in this scenario, if there is visually significant cataract, you consider cataract extraction and possibly with one other IOP lowering surgery combined. And these IOP lowering procedures may include goniosiniculysis, endoscopic cyclophotocoagulation or transcleral cyclophotocoagulation, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, trabeculectomy, or glaucoma drainage device implantation. Whether you need to combine the, the phacal emulsification with an IOP lowering procedure depends very much on how severe or how advanced the glaucoma is, how badly controlled the intraocular pressure is, and also the, 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 the tolerance of the eye or the patient to more major surgery. Now, if there is no visually significant cataract, then once again, you have to decide whether the lens is the dominating mechanism. If the lens mechanism predominates, then you may consider clear lens extraction plus or minus other IOP lowering surgery using the same rationale as we went through just now. Or alternatively, if the lens is not the major contributing mechanism, then you may consider pro proceeding to just one of these other intraocular pressure lowering surgery. Now, in the next part of my talk, I'll be talking about the performance of cataract or lens extraction in, first of all, primary angle closure glaucoma, and then in the special situation of acute primary angle closure. 
Now, first of all, let's look at PACG. In PACG eyes, it is now well known that very often they've got very shallow anterior chamber, which is significantly deepened by removing the cataract or the lens. This is because the IOL implanted into the eye is very much thinner than the physiological lens or the cataract. Now, how do you know whether the lens is the main predominating mechanism leading to angle closure in a particular eye? I think most of the information you can get at the slit lamp. Now, these include the central anterior chamber depth and also what I would call the Mount Fujiyama sign. Of course, there are also all these other quantitative measurements that you can make of the anterior chamber, but most of these are more for research purposes than for clinical management. For clinical management, I think by far the most important parameter would be the central anterior chamber depth. The reason for choosing the central depth is because this is the combination of the effects of both the thickness of the lens as well as the anterior posterior position of the lens. Now this illustrates what I mean by the Mount Fujiyama sign. Basically, if you're looking at the front part of the lens as well as the iris, from an angle, usually when looking through the mirror of a gonioscopic lens, you will see that the shape of the anterior surface of the lens as well as the iris, in particular when the eye is in a pupil constricted state, looks very much like a volcano. The reason for that is because of the very thick and anteriorly positioned lens with the iris being draped over the anterior surface of the lens and the pupil is at the peak of this a small mountain. So you can see that the overall configuration very much resembles a volcano. And this means that the lens is an important contributing mechanism to angle closure in this particular eye. Now this is a randomized controlled trial that our group conducted in Hong Kong, in which we randomized eyes with PACG into receiving either cataract extraction alone, which is represented by the solid black line, versus treatment by combined phacotrapicolectomy, which is represented by the dotted line here. You can see that um, even with just phacoemulsification alone in these eyes, there's a very significant reduction in intraocular pressure immediately after surgery, and this IOP reduction is well maintained over the course of the following six years after surgery. With combined phacotrapicolectomy, of course, there's a further slight uh, increase in IOP reduction, and this difference between the two treatments is also sustained over the course of at least six years. But of course, with combined phacotrapicolectomy, there's an increased risk of surgical complications arising from the procedure. Now, this other chart here demonstrates to you the requirement for glaucoma drugs after these two treatments. So once again, you can see that with just cataract extraction alone, there's a significant reduction in the requirement of glaucoma drugs and this effect is quite well maintained over six years. And also with phagal trabeculectomy, there's a further reduction in the requirement for glaucoma drugs. But for both of these treatments, you can see that with time, gradually the number of drugs that are required to be used gradually increase with time over the course of about six years. Now, one other important figure I would like to share with you is that for those eyes treated with phagal emulsification alone, about 20% required trabeculectomy during the six year of follow-up at the mean time of about two and a half years after the initial surgery. Whereas for the group treated by combined phagal trabeculectomy, none of the eyes required additional glaucoma surgery. Now in the next part of my talk, I'll be talking about acute primary angle closure and the applications of cataract extraction in this special situation. Now, in the management of acute primary angle closure, there are usually two stages uh, of management. In the first stage, you try to reduce the intraocular pressure and to relieve the symptoms as quickly as possible. And traditionally, this has been achieved by using drugs, both topical and systemic. But more recently, it has been demonstrated that argon laser peripheral iridoplasty can be a very effective first stage treatment. Whereas in the second stage, we aim to do something to prevent the recurrence of the acute primary angle closure. 
can also prevent a progression to the chronic form of the disease. Traditionally, this has been achieved very successfully by laser peripheral iridotomy, but more recently, our group has demonstrated that early lens extraction may be an even safer and even more effective means to achieve these goals of the stage two treatment. Now, this is a randomized controlled trial that we conducted in Hong Kong with an 18 month follow up in which we randomize eyes with acute primary angle closure into receiving either early phacal emulsification or traditional laser iridotomy after the pressure has been controlled. You can see that for the group treated by early phacal emulsification, only 3.2% of the eyes at the last follow-up had an increased intraocular pressure as compared to almost 50% in those eyes treated by laser iridotomy. Also, there's a quite a significant difference in the requirement for glaucoma drugs between the two groups being uh, an average of 0.05 for the phacal treated group as compared to 0.9 for the laser iridotomy group. Another interesting parameter that you may be interested to know is the endothelial loss from these two modalities of treatment. Actually, they are quite comparable. For the group of early phacal emulsification, the endothelial loss averages around 14% as compared to around 13.5% for the laser iridotomy group. But you, you do have to bear in mind that for the laser iridotomy group, subsequently, at some stage in the life, they would have to undertake phacal emulsification as well. So I think for, based on this study, in conclusion, I would say that after aborting acute primary angle closure, lens extraction reduces peripheral anterior syn ear synechiae formation and also reduce the chance of progression to the chronic form of PACG. And this phacal emulsification can also be considered to combine with synechiolysis, whether of the gonio type or the visco synechiolysis type. So before I finish off, let me remind all of you, our 2021 APAO Congress will be in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. You notice that in this particular slide, we have left out the date because right now, because of the uncertain, uncertainties arising from the COVID-19 pandemic, we are, we are still looking at possible dates for this Congress. And I think it will very likely be in August 2021. And in 2021, we are particularly happy to share with you that we are going to celebrate the 60th anniversary of APAO. So please do uh, mark your calendar when the dates arrive so that we can celebrate the 60th anniversary of APAO with all of you. Another meeting I would like to remind you about for next year is the Asia Pacific Glaucoma Congress, which is originally also scheduled for uh, August, mid-August but there could potentially be some further changes in dates because right now APAO and APGS are discussing the possibility of combining the two congresses. So do watch this space, we'll keep you posted and I very much look forward to sharing more about glaucoma with all of you very soon next year. Thank you very much for your kind intention and thank you very much for inviting me to join your esteemed congress.